Hey guys, welcome back. We are continuing our lectures with about T-cells. The topic today is T-cell selection. And I'm deliberately calling it T-cell selection. The same topic is actually called many other names. I have heard and read T-cell education, T-cell training, T-cell maturation, and of course T-cell selection. So the process is very important. The concept plays a very important role. This process plays a very important role in pathology. So many of the autoimmune diseases stem from the incorrect process or defective process, this particular process, T cell selection process. So this topic, high yield, very high yield from USMLE point of view, very high yield from a medical, from a practicing doctor's point of view. So pay attention to this one and make sure that you understand it. I usually uh, recommend this to my students that because these videos are on YouTube or these videos are on some digital playing system, you can actually pause the video whenever you like, make, take down some notes and then resume the video. So again, keep a notepad with you and as various concepts are put forth, make sure that you understand them or make a note of them. The things which I would like to cover today in this lecture are number one, we should know what is the structure of thymus. Number two, we should understand how a T cell, which is not yet committed to be a helper or a cytotoxic T cell, how does that T cell come into the thymus and become a particular kind of cell, CD4 or CD8? How does that process work? What is positive selection? What is negative selection? What is double positive? what is double negative, what is single positive, and what are the thymus uh, hormones like thymosines or thymopoietins, and similarly, what is the DN1, DN2, DN3, and so on. So very, very important topics, very high yield concepts. So let's get them done quickly and move on from there. So first of all, thymus. So if I make a thymus here, thymus is usually double lobed gland present of course you, you are all aware on the neck on the front of the neck this gland two lobes are further cut up into small lobules these lobules are actually interconnected but anyway small lobules the point is not to teach histology here but the point is to show the structure of the thymus so similar structure here but two lobes and then small lobules and I hope that you know this thing, that from a um, from histological point of view, any tissue which shows two distinct types within the uh, within the histological slide. So, for example, if I take any tissue, here is some tissue, mostly glandular tissues behave this way, some tissue, and you can actually see that the outer area of the tissue shows a different pattern of cells than the inner area. So you can differentiate between them, you can, you can demarcate them. If that is the case, outer side is called cortex and inner side is called, inner area is called medulla or medulla. So that's true for all tissues. Any tissue which shows boundaries or shows two types of tissues, uh, outer and inner, will be cortex and medulla. That is also true here. So these lobules within the thymus, these lobules show a different structure on the outer side of the lobule than the structure, histological structure on the inner side. So the pattern is different. You can figure it out that there's an outer area and the inner area. So of course, every lobule is divided into cortex, that will be the outer area and medulla that will be the central area. So remember that from a histological point of view and also from USMLE point of view. Many of the USMLE questions are going to ask you where will you find double positive cells? And you should know that are these in cortex or are these in medulla? They would ask where would you find single positive cells? They would ask where would you find double negative cells? So all these things, where, where, what, are, what is the location of a cell within the thymus lobule? is something which you should know. So from that point of view, 
cortex and medulla is one. Secondly, the blood supply, again this much that the blood vessels when they arrive, the blood supply brings in the cells, these cells will be of course the blood cells, but with those blood cells will come stem cells. Stem cells are immature T cells. These are the T cells coming from the bone marrow into the thymus to become educated, to become trained or correctly, this is the right way to say, to become selected for selection process. So these cells come in through the blood vessels and once the cells have been selected from the central area of the medulla, these cells will be then exiting the thymus lobule. So this is the importance of the blood supply here that the cells come in and a uh, little bit more this is a question actually the question is where do the thymocytes thymocytes are the stem cells from the bone marrow which are T lymphocytes which are immature those immature T lymphocytes which they come in they enter the thymus lobule at the thymo sorry why did I say thymo at cortico cortico medullary junction junction so that is very important so what I'm going to do is I am going to pick up this lobule and draw that here so let's do it and I'm going to take the portion like this I'm going to take a small portion this much so here, this portion is, this portion is medulla. So this part here, this part has, will appear here. This is the medulla, part of the medulla. Then, this portion is the cortex. So I have taken, so this is the cortex. This portion is cortex. So I've taken a slice of the thymic lobule and I have drawn that here. How does this histologically or from a T cell selection process point of view, how is this tissue arranged? So first of all recognize one area. This area, this area is cortico medullary junction. So this is cortex and this is medulla. This portion is cortico medullary junction. Very important thing why the cells, the, the stem cells coming from the bone marrow which are going to become T cell, mature T cells, these cells enter at the cortico medullary junction. So if I make a little thymocyte here a pretty thymocyte, so this is a thymocyte. This thymocyte is going to enter at the corticomedullary junction. So that is first point to note. Now, the cortex of the thymus is further divided into one, one, two, three, and four. Junction one or zone one, zone for area 1, area 2, area 3 and area 4, right? This is medulla, medulla doesn't have further subclassifications but this is the structure of the cortex. Now what happens is, so if I spill the beans, if I tell you what is this topic about, what will happen? What will happen is the lymphocyte would enter, this is a stem cell lymphocyte, it's not a mature T cell yet, the, it would enter the thymus through the corticomedullary junction then it would traverse outwards, so remember it's a circular thing, so outwards, here it looks uh, upwards, through zone 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. Once it reaches here, it would then traverse back, so I'm going to make a little path here. The thymocyte or the stem cell is going to go here, that is the first travel. Then it will travel back through the cortex into the medulla. When it reaches here, it gets final part of the selection or final education and then it gets out as a mature happy T cell. So if I make a T cell here, 
this will be the remember that happy t sum this will be that well this looks sad this will be a happy t sum why is this happy because it doesn't have any legs or arms this is a happy t sum well, let's make this cute little t cell let's give him some so it doesn't feel bad so fine you know why this little t cell is happy because it is selected to go work in the body still well uh, selection to go work is a bothersome thing it is to work now why is it happy it is so happy that it did not die here a majority of the cells that would enter here will either die in the cortex or they will be dead in the medulla that is called the selection so a bunch of cells will come in now pay attention to this a bunch of cells will come in a lot of those will not be selected to serve the body the recruitment process would say you guys are not good and these would die these would commit suicide these would commit apoptosis they would die in this area or these would die in this area so whatever cells which have survived are actually very important cells these are happy cells because they know we can do the function and secondly they are living they did not die so now let's see what happens again i would like to call it a selection process i would not like to call it education process or i would not like to call it training why not training process or education process means if i do not know something i am taught and then i know it and i can work that way here if a cell is not good cell if it is a harmful cell we cannot educate it to become a good cell we will have to kill that cell so that is why this is not training we are not making bad cells into good cells we are only converting we are selecting good cells and killing bad cells that is why it is a selection process it's not education it's not training and it is selection okay see you soon